Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dr. Frel, your professor. Our next lesson will be on institutions and economic development. The first thing that we have to do is to define what institutions are. Authors publish that institutions means the rules of a structural social interaction both formal and informal or they are structure incentives in human exchange be it political or social institutions are said to have some effects on the economic development of countries because it determines the frameworks in which economic exchange occurs. It also determines the volume of the actions and the benefits from economic exchange. When I say formal institution, these are property rights, legal system, or the rule of law or the constitution. It also includes contracts and uh, forms of government according to North, Lodes, and Farel. While informal institutions are pertains to how people behave in their everyday life, this might be linked to their religion, their history, their traditions, customs, or moral values, and other norms of behavior that have passed the test of time and therefore being accepted by the society. Now, the next question is, how do institutions form, particularly as to efficiency or social conflict view of institutions? First, institutions affect economic outcomes, but society will choose those institutions that maximize social surplus. So we are speaking here of both the formal and the informal institutions. When we say maximize social surplus, we mean the benefits that the society may receive out of these outcomes. This according to North and Thomas and themselves. Another is institutions are not always chosen by all of society but instead by the few, hence it is not efficient. So, cost theorem does not apply in this case, such that the winners do not fully compensate the losers. When we say cost theorem, it means an economic efficiency of an economic allocation or outcome and the presence of externalities. Speaking of externalities, these are actually cost benefits that affects a third party who did not choose to incur that cost or that benefit. Further, North 1981 argues that institutions act in order to constrain or to refrain individuals to enhance the welfare of the principles or those few elites. So as what I am saying earlier, institutions can and will likely to result in an elite forming who will attempt to retain their position of power. Maybe you are also familiar with situations in our present society where institutions are more likely uh, 
resulting to formation of a group of elite people that uh, try to attempt to retain their positions of power. So these institutions can be developmental or predatory. When we say developmental institutions are institutions that encourage investment, growth, and of course productivity in the society. While predatory institutions, these are those that did are wise, those that are extractive, uh, and uh, only favors the few. Next is the fundamental causes of growth. There are actually some causes of growth. One is economic institutions. Second is, of course, culture. Then we have uh, trade and integration and geography. So we'll take it one at a time. When you say economic institutions, these are encouraging investment through incentives, human capital, entrepreneurship, innovation, occupational choice, or land ownership. These are actually specific agencies or foundations, whether government and private, devoted to studying economic data or they are commissioned with the job of supplying a good or a service that is actually important to the economy of the country. And when we speak of culture, these are of course values, beliefs, religion, or customs, no? arts also, social institutions and achievements of a particular country, of people or of social groups. And uh, when we speak of uh, trade and integration, these are actually those that affects productivity and changes. Or an example of this are the establishment of some free trade between a number of countries or with uh, those that aims to secure benefits of uh, international specialization and our benefits of international trade. And of course, geography, which uh, pertains to uh, Probably with uh, places and relationships between people and their environment, such as, uh, say, the climate, their agricultural or technological productivity, and some uh, temperate zones than those in the tropics, uh, some infectious diseases that burdens the place or other natural endowments no? that uh, uh, make up the geography of that particular country. The next is the role of institution as causes of economic growth and development. And to some, it's called endogeneity, or a, considering it as a dependent variable. According to Rodrigue in 2001, these are uh, some variables no, that causes economic growth and development. Of course, we have income, we have trade, we have these institutions, and uh, geography. Looking into the arrows that uh, uh, connects these four 
courses in considering geography as the starting point. To some degree, geography affects income as well as the presence of these uh, institutions, whether formal or informal. When we say income, we per it pertains to, or we talk about the gross national income, or previously known as the gross national product. That is the sum of the gross domestic product plus the factor incomes earned by foreign residents. So, income, of course, uh, affects trade, right? And uh, when we speak of trade, we mean the action of uh, buying and selling of goods and services and uh, to some degree uh, trade also affects income at the same time trade also affects institutions and vice versa and uh, this institution also affects income of the country. Now let's look at the evidence of institutions and economic growth in Korea. Since uh, it's split no, into North and South Korea in 1948, Korea shared the same geography, the same history and culture. But North Korea went into dictator and socialism as its institutions. And South Korea went in, into uh, dictator and capitalist uh, that involved private property rights. And uh, in 1980, it went into a democracy. So, Micro-level evidence of importance of land property rights have on investment in agriculture in less developed countries. So today, uh, you can see the difference between these two countries uh, as evidenced by their institutions and economic growth. Then we have the types of institutions. First are those institutions that protect individual property rights. Example are those institutions that defend against expropriation of resources such as the formal institution. Another is institutions related to democratic political rights so this particularly speaks for formal institutions such as uh, laws uh, the constitution and the like and of course institutions correcting coordination failure efficiency of government such as for example in the implementation of policy like that of the case of uh, South Korea. Okay, so today class, our concentration in our discussion is more on institution relating to growth. Uh, however, almost all aspects of development are actually influenced by institutions such as in terms of levels of equality such as uh, in income uh, as well as in uh, social equity or those enjoyed by the people now from the government uh, including also of course urbanization education health sustainability and uh, the like so for this topic's uh, activity, 
This is the question intended for you to answer. Our institutions, the cause of our current economic performance. Defend your answer by citing literature from sources. So, the last slide is intended for the suggested readings for you to check on as you answer the question and uh, for you to further uh, understand the topic in this video. So again, this is Dr. Ferrer, the professor in the subject, and uh, see you in the next presentation.